Welcome back to the Student Hub Live. We thought we'd come back with some sound, sorry, but doing all of these live science experiments does have its hazards. Anyway, welcome to our Wheel of Ologies quiz. Now, we know that students at the Open University will meet lots of ologies in their studies, and so we have this game to help you understand what some of them might mean. Now, we all need a quiz master for a good quiz. And so we have Professor of Planetary Geosciences, Dave Rothery, here to, to put our team from the Research and Academic Strategy Office through their paces. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Karen. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, all you new students, especially anybody studying S111 questions in science. I was on the team that wrote that. I wrote topic seven, does the earth move beneath your feet? I also wrote the Volcanoes, Earthquakes and Tsunamis short course. I run the Moon's MOOC that we have with Future Learn. And I chair S283, Level 2 course, Planetary Science and the Search for Life. So I hope to run into some of you at some point in your studies. But today... Is that with a small M or a large M, Dave? Moon's... The Moon. Our Moon has a capital ah. M. Other Moon's little M. OK. Very important to get these things right in science, isn't it? It is, but if you're, just, <laughs> if you're just talking, it doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, they can hear us now. <laughs> but today I'm uh, doing something completely different, which is um, humiliating some of my colleagues. <laughs> so let's introduce the first team. From on my left, it's uh, Team Iron. We're not quite sure where these names came from. Bernard is the captain. Bernard's over that Bernard's side. Bernard's over that side. It's <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, introduce yourself and your team, please. OK, um, so I'm Stephen Conway, and I'm the Director of Research and Academic Strategy here at the Open University. I've been here since September of last year and, and enjoying it all very much. Um, we do a lot of work uh, around research and, and supporting the academic activities of the university. And a, a really important thing happening at the moment is we're registering 108 new graduate students who are starting their PhD studies today. So if any of them are, are listening in, we hope that... Uh, we wish you the best of luck for all of your studies. So I'll introduce Lise, who's, a, who's an honorary member of Research and Academic <laughs> Strategy for today. And Lise, I see you have an iron. I do have an iron for our good luck, of oh, course. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and Lorna? Hi, my name is Lorna O'Herlihy. Um, I work in research and academic, stra academic strategy as well. Um, I'm a research development manager supporting researchers around funding. So I always thought RAS was the Royal Astronomical Society, but I'm learning <laughs> we have an RAS, an RAS of our own here. So team captain of the other team, which is Team Rave for some reason, is Bernard. Hello, I'm Bernard Cohen. I've worked at the Open University for over 25 years. I'm the Head of Planning and Resources in Research and Academic Strategy, but I'm also a student on A363, my sixth module with the OU, and that's about to start, and I'm terrified about that. <laughs> on my left is Gemma. Yep, I'm Gemma Maldar. I lead the research development team within RAS, and we support all of our academics in their endeavours to bring external research money into the Open University and further our research activity. And on my right is Michael. Hello, I'm Michael Flack. Uh, I've been working at the Open University for nearly as long as Bernard and uh, I currently work on overseeing project management for uh, academic strategy projects. Uh, I've done a, during that 23 years that I've been, um, been here, I've done an OU degree and an OU Masters in Philosophy. Okay, can I just hear how the raver's buzzer sounds? Can you bang that thing? So you're a beep beep and uh, the iron is... That was a clang, was it? <laughs> OK, because I have to tell who's answered first. OK, this will this will work fine. And on our social media desk is HJ, who'll be watching what's going on at home. Yes, so you can join in with the chat. So put your answers in the chat, tell us what you think, and I'm sure collectively we can beat everyone in the studio. With the team names, this was uh, thanks to Juliana. We had a look at our ri uh, library rave and we decided... Um, to name the teams in honour of the Library Wave, where we did indeed have an iron for some reason. But uh, <laughs> Li Libby thinks that uh, we can have some raving good answers, and uh, Fran says you can't argue with an iron, so uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see about that. But uh, Ronald's telling us as well, uh, in terms of our computer problems, IBM stands for it's better manually, so uh, ho hopefully we've all sorted out our issues now. <laughs> Oh, excellent. Well, let's hope we don't have any clangers from Team Iron uh, today. OK, well, the rules of the game are 
Um, it's a wheel of ologies, and my, there's the wheel, and here's my glamorous assistant who will be <laughs> spinning the wheel to decide which category of questions, and I will be asking the questions of the teams here and of the people at home. The answer will be bread A, cheese B, chalk C, or cabbage D, or something like that. And you, as soon as you think you know the answer, buzz in and hold up the letter to tell me. Do you think it's fair that the teams have a start of one each day? Well, should I adjust that? <laughs> There's a score one each. Yeah. Like zero each, please. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and hopefully people will be playing at home. Uh, do we know if the widgets are working so people can play? OK, so we're just going to have to answer via social media. Yes, okay. that's what we'll do. We'll type our answers in the chat and then we'll... Uh... It's funny, Team Home always seem to win this. I know. I think there's a lot of Google tests happening at the same time, which is <laughs> no coincidence whatsoever. It, it, it's just something that has to be done. You know, these search engines need rigorous <laughs> testing. <laughs> Nothing to do with this quiz. Well, we're in experimental mood after the science, so uh, we'll give the widgets a whirl. We'll see if they work. If they don't, you'll just have to type your answers. What I do know is, is that whilst we have a very robust measurement here of uh, the scores in the studio, Team Home do tend to have a, a slightly more um, diverse way of, of being in the lead, so to speak. So uh, pop your answers in the chat if the widgets aren't working for you at home. OK, and um, the last thing before we start is to explain the various ologies so we have epistemology, which is the nature, sources and limits of knowledge. There's pantology, a view of all branches of human knowledge. There's agnotology, which is human ignorance. And I'm convinced some of these terms have just been made up. There's zoology, which I think we all know is the study of animals. There's etymology, the study of words and their origins. And there's ninjology. The study of ninjas. Well, they're random bonus point questions, basically. <laughs> um, as I said, I'll, I'll read the question out. The team that thinks it knows the answer first, hit your buzzer and hold up the letter. Do we have an OU module on ninjology day that you're involved with? <laughs> uh, no, we don't. Maybe it will come out of the OU redesign process, which is <laughs> underway, but I very much doubt it and hope it doesn't. <laughs> Fingers crossed. OK. Would we know if it did? OK. Yeah, this is it. Who's been on a philosophy? Actually, it's you, isn't it, Michael? <laughs> I think it's high time to start, so Karen, I right. hope you're ready at home. Please spin that wheel. Not that fast. I know, sorry. I was thinking of the, I've been told off of being a bit, like, overexcited today, but... Uh, do it a bit more. Oh, there, well, there it was worse. That's ninja <laughs> OK. So, your first ninja logical question is, what phenomenon can be ribbon, rocket, streak or sheet? Is it... You were first. Is it D-lightning? No, it's not D-lightning. So... The ravers get the full question. <laughs> is it A, types of pasta? Is it B, types of lightning? Is it C, types of cloud? Or D, types of metal? Are we agreeing on this? Or lightning, as it says on the widget. Apologies mm. for that spelling mistake. Yeah. We didn't talk about stationery. <laughs> we think it's B, lightning. It is B, or lightning. lightning. <laughs> <laughs> See, but you knew the answer, yeah. but you didn't know what letter went with it. Well, you tipped us off. You said you could jump in and guess whether yeah, it's going to be A, B, C, C or D. Yeah, but you've got one in four chance. <laughs> 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 OK, so... I did exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a score of 1-0 there. And at home, do people think they knew that it was lightning? Uh, it seems that they got there in the end, but uh, initially I thought of pasta, but I think that's just all our food talk from earlier, <laughs> getting in there. Did we realise it was spelt wrong? Have we had our <laughs> yes, group? no, they were right on that. <laughs> Good job that it wasn't in etymology, otherwise that would be really bad. It would, wouldn't it? Mm. Okay. Well done, Claudia, for spotting that. <laughs> OK, with a score at 1-0, let's spin that wheel, but please. But slowly. <laughs> Ninjology again. OK. Your second ninjological question. Mackenzie King... Alexander Mackenzie and Mackenzie Bowell all served as Prime Minister of which country? Was it A, 
Canada? Was it B, New Zealand? Was it C, Australia? C, Australia? No. Or was it D, the Bahamas? OK, ironers. One in three chance, if mm -hmm. you don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. OK. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a guess. D. Just a guess. Yeah. yeah. We'll go for D. Which is the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, no. I wonder if the ladies and gentlemen at home have got it yet. We're thinking Canada at home. That's the strongest one coming through. I'm a politics student, so I'm ashamed I don't know straight away, but uh, that's the one that's sort of prevailing, I think. OK, us. well, the answer is indeed A, Canada. So, well done, team home. Nice. And <laughs> So, no points were earned in the studio here, but I can ask a bonus question. For one bonus point, who is the current Prime Minister of Canada? <laughs> Justin Trudeau, correct. Is that worth one point? That's one point for a bonus. His father, Pierre Trudeau, was PM of Canada from 68 to 79 and again from 1980 to 1984. <laughs> OK. I think we're ready for another question. Spin the wheel and don't let I won't, it I won't, I won't, land on I won't, green I won't. again. Look, I've done it now. See, I've, uh... Etymology. <laughs> OK. So, an etymological question, the study of words. For what would a doctor use a sphygmomanometer? That's sphygmomanometer. Is it A, to listen to your heart beat? Is it B, to measure your blood pressure? Is it C, to write out a prescription? Or is it D, to check your temperature? Is it B? B being... The blood pressure. Blood pressure. Yes, it is indeed. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> right, one point. And how are people's blood pressures doing at home, HJ? <laughs> it seems to be doing well. We got B in the chat overwhelmingly. A couple of C's and D's, but uh, I think because we're going it collectively as a team, I think we should get well, I for think that it's one. hard to put that into Wikipedia or whatever it is that yes. everyone's <laughs> using. Yeah, I'm not sure they had a chance <laughs> to look this one up. <laughs> I mean, the ravers brought an iPad with them, but they're using it to prop up their mascots. <laughs> <laughs> OK, plenty of time to go. Uh, spin that wheel, please, Karen. Oh, the suspense. <gasps> Pantology. <laughs> A view of all branches of human knowledge. The symbol of an archer is associated with which sign of the zodiac? Is it A, Scorpio? Is it B, Sagittarius? <coughs> that was a dinghy one. Who's got the dinghy one? <coughs> that was you first, then, <coughs> I think. Is it B, Sagittarius? Yep. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna, if you want to place your... Bell a little closer to me so the sound reaches my ears sooner. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all be watching this on catch up later, just to check. <laughs> <laughs> but there wasn't much time at home, did they get that? Uh, they did on the, because uh, the widgets on it working now, which is really good. good. But uh, we have, I'm wondering if we have a lot of Sagittarius in the chat, because I recently discovered all um, these signs of the zodiac things, and I've been really bad in looking in newspapers now. <laughs> <to my own. laughs> but uh, Lisa's saying my brain works well so far, and Juliana and uh, Libby are right on that one, so well done. OK. Well, I'm a Pisces, and we Pisces don't believe in horoscopes. <laughs> 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 Nothing to do with the planetary science thing, no? <laughs> Spin that wheel, Karen. Etymology. OK, our second etymological question. What tiny creature is variously known as a slater, a cheese log, a roly-poly bug and a chucky pig? Is it A, a snail? Is it B, a woodlouse? We believe it's B, a woodlouse. A woodlouse. <laughs> Do you concur? You were almost on the point of buzzing. I think, I think Lorna, you, you said one last time. Mm. Yeah. C, uh, C, butterfly, D, centipede. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the, the correct answer is, is B, it's a woodlouse. Well done. A point to the ironers. Um, 
As part of this year's National Poetry Day, BBC Radio listeners were asked to submit distinctive local expressions to form the basis of a specially commissioned poem. Cheese logs was the popular choice among listeners in Berkshire. <laughs> Wood lice are known as roly poly bugs in North America, slaters in Scotland, New Zealand, and Australia, and chucky pigs in the southwest of England. <laughs> They're often called cheese logs in the south of England, particularly in Berkshire. So, who knew that? What are they call something new yeah. every day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call them in Cardiff, Karen? I don't know. I don't think we have them there. Blooming nuisance, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that was very quick. Did people at home know that to Slater, cheese log, chucky pig is a woodlouse? Uh, I think we were a bit split between snails and woodlouse to start off. Jane was right in there, so a point to Jane there. Uh, Lisa says, uh, I'm a Pisces too, so uh, we'll see if it's true whether or not. Uh, Pisces do believe in horoscopes, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. And how is the score, Karen? Well, uh, we have Team Iron in the lead uh, and Team Rave uh, lagging behind. There's plenty of Three time to go. To yes, indeed. Spin that wheel. All right. What do we really want, Dave? Oh. Not, not that we would manipulate any of this, because it's a purely scientific process. Etymology again. Etymology. I'm convinced etymology comes up the more than any other. third etymological question. What phenomenon might be occurring if you came across a group of umbra files? U M B R A, umbra files. Is it A, a solar eclipse? Is it B, a rocket launch? Is it C, the summer solstice? Or is it D, a volcanic eruption? Come on, come on. <laughs> Go for D. A volcanic, the volcanic eruption. eruption. Nope. <laughs> A eclipses. Why? Because the word penumbra springs to mind, but I can't remember what it means. <laughs> well, penumbra is almost a shadow, and umbra is a full shadow. Oh. So, yes, it is. Hey. Umbra oh, files are people that like shadows, <laughs> so they also like solar eclipses. So, that's a point. And there's a bonus question here. Um, of course, there was a total solar eclipse visible across. Most from east coast to coast across North America uh, in August. What song did Bonnie Tyler sing to mark the occasion? <laughs> Your hands got there first, but your sound came out first. <laughs> was, it, was it Total Eclipse of the Heart? It was indeed. You got a bonus point. <laughs> Maybe start with your hands closer. Don't start from up here. <laughs> OK. Right, we're on 4-3, four, four, Team three. Iron in the lead. Pantology. It's Sorry. boring when you spin it's the It's not record. boring, Dave, this I is my moment. <laughs> this, is, this is when everyone goes, oh, yes, the study of, what is it? <laughs> Pantology, which country's flag features a lion, a pineapple and a turtle? Think you know? Oh. oh. Sorry, oh. Okay. <laughs> nerves. nerves got the better of me. Uh, we're going to say C, and I'm going to buy these people a drink later. <laughs> Bring it down to Tobago. What, what, what do you think C is? Uh, the Philippines? Or yeah. one of the islands out that way? Well, it's both wrong, anyway. <laughs> so, so, the full question to Team Iron. The, the, what country's flag features a lion, a pineapple and a turtle? Is it A, Jamaica? Is it B, Belize? Is it C, Papua New Guinea? Or is it D, the Cayman Islands? What were we thinking? C. Well, I think you just said both is wrong, so um, you want to be C. All right, well done, well done. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Cayman Island, Belize, or was it Papua New Guinea? Yeah. Team captain. Right. <laughs> Can't remember which option it was, but we're going for B. Belize. B, B was Belize. Belize, and I'm afraid that's wrong. The correct answer is the Cayman Islands, where the turtle and pineapple are indigenous flora and fauna. OK, well, nobody picked many points there, so we'll have a bonus point, then we'll find out how they did at home. For a bonus point, which athlete carried the Jamaican flag at the Olympic opening ceremony in London 2012? <laughs> You were first. The same bolt. It was Usain Bolt. 
Actually, okay. can we still talk about wood lice? Home. Yes, I've heard. Uh, what does Jane call it? Calls it in her area monkey peas. I haven't monkey heard peas. that one before. That's a bit <laughs> different, but I quite like that. <laughs> but uh, we'd that's love Ken. to know where what uh, that's local to. But um, uh, Jane and uh, I think Fran uh, both got D as well. So we do think the Cayman Islands. I think we're hearing from USA at some point. The uh, Students Association, they're coming along. And uh, maybe we'll have some sign-ups to the University Challenge team as well, I think, with some of these answers. <laughs> Good. We need a good university challenge team. We had a good one last year and it wasn't accepted, was it? We do well when we get on. Yes. <laughs> do try and join the team. It's great fun on university challenge. Well, we're halfway through and uh, we've only got four points oh. each. We need to up the ante, Dave. It's only about 15 points by now. Right, Pantology. Pantology. OK. Complicated question. Concentrate. Fingers on buzzers. It was the year that saw Margaret Thatcher elected leader of the Conservative Party, Bruce Springsteen released Born to Run, and Jaws premiered in cinemas. But which of the following events did not take place in 1975? A. The first episode of Faulty Towers was aired. B. The first email was sent. C, Queen released Bohemian Rhapsody, or D, the European Space Agency was established? OK, I'm looking for what did not take place in 75. B. What didn't happen in 75? First email. Yeah, it was not when the first email was sent. So a point to the ironers. Um, Computer engineer Ray Tomlinson sent the very first email in 1971. He also decided to use the at symbol to separate re the recipient's name from their location. Well, there we go. Margaret Thatcher was elected in 1979. Yeah. That, was, that was Prime Minister, though. Yeah, this that is leader, leader of the Conservative Party. I did say concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> so so there's a point the earned on my left, but there's a bonus point available now. For a bonus point... In which seaside town was Faulty Towers set? Torquay. Torquay, yes. OK, did they know at home, HJ, what didn't happen in 75? I think that's our first wrong collective question. Uh, we did think it was the uh, first email that was sent as well. Um, and uh, Libby and Fran got straight in there. I think we should get a bonus point for that, because they said 1971 before uh, we did here in the studio. But... Uh, Yes, so unfortunately that's our first wrong one. But I reckon we're still ahead. Well, you would, wouldn't you? That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing on the scores? Well, oh, we've got six four for Team Iron and the lead. Let's yeah, see what's awesome. next. Lingeology. Lingeology again. OK. Not so elusive today. <laughs> yeah. Which classic British car brand was founded by William Lyons and promised grace, pace and... I'm sorry, wrong order. Grace, space and pace. Was it A, Bentley? Was it B, Rolls-Royce? Was it C, Jaguar? Or D, Mini? C, Jaguar. Correct. Um, and for a bonus point, which fictional Oxford-based detective... <laughs> 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 Inspector Moss. Do you want to double or quits? Because it could have been Lewis. Could have been, but I'll stick with Moss. <laughs> OK, bonus points. Either, yeah. <laughs> double, he, Dave. He, no, they didn't double or quits. They did. It's one point. He drove a red Mark II Jaguar in the books by Colin, the series based on the books by Colin Dexter. OK. <laughs> So, how are we now? It's OK, five, five seven. seven. OK, spin... Oh, at home, how did they do on uh, whatever that question was about? Uh, the, the Jaguar Jaguars. Band. I had to have a guess at that one, but I guessed right. But I'm not sure that really counts if I'm just guessing, but... Um, Grace, pace and space. Grace, space... But not in that order. Yes. <laughs> and we've spun the wheel, and we are landing on... <laughs> Etymology. There's a surprise. OK. We've had three of these already. Who said, 
Where words fail, music speaks. Was it A, John Lennon? Was it B, Hans Christian Andersen? Was it C, Mozart? Or D, William Shakespeare? Where, wo <laughs> Where words fail, music <laughs> speaks. Gonna have to hurry you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Team Captain, which are you holding up? Uh, can we go on that one? Uh, C, Mozart. Wrong. Damn it, it wasn't me. <laughs> I was thinking, but I don't know. Wait, I'll have to go with you. Um, D with Shakespeare. D Shakespeare. Yeah, maybe. But John, I am. Okay. So, yeah, okay, we'll go for D Shakespeare. Well, you're wrong as well. What a stunning display of ignorance. <laughs> I didn't know either. It was the Danish author Anderson, best remembered as a writer of fairy tales. John Lennon once said, music is everybody's possession. It's only publishers who think that people own it. Mm -hmm. A little bit profound. And William Shakespeare famously wrote... If music be the food of love, Yeah, wasn't that... I think that deserves a point, though. Well, we then we get that. A if, if we were watching Upstart <laughs> Crow on television the other night, that no. was the name of the episode. <laughs> a food of love or something. Very funny series. Who got the point now? Well, I, don't know, I reckon they should have a bonus point for saying the end of that uh, quote. You reckon? Yeah, but I do. I'm the quiz master. <laughs> your <laughs> job is to spin that wheel. <laughs> oh, all right. I, well, I just want to make it a bit more interesting. There we are, pants on the again. <laughs> And the questions, the answers are worth two points now, by the way, OK? Two points for this answer. In which novel by Jane Austen would you find the characters Lady Catherine de Burr, Charlotte Lucas and George Wickham? Is it A, Emma? Is it B, Sense and Sensibility? Is it D, Mansfield Park? Oh, sorry, C, Mansfield Park? Or is it D, Pride and Prejudice? Team Home have already decided. <laughs> D, Pride and Prejudice. Yes, of course it is. Well done. Two points there. Um, oh. for, yeah, two points, yeah. Okay. And for, I think still just one bonus point. Can you tell me the first line of Pride and Prejudice? <laughs> <laughs> it is a truth universally acknowledged that a man... That's a single woman. No, a man, a single man in possession of a fortune is in need of a wife or something like that. That's close enough. One yeah. bonus point. <laughs> it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. <laughs> and what's that done to the scores, Kat? Well, it's got Team Raven in the lead with eight points now compared to Team Mine who are on seven. seven. Okay. Now, surely the well-read OU students knew that Catherine de Burr and Georgie Wickham were in Pride and Prejudice, didn't they? Well, I had no idea, but they were straight in there on the chat. And uh, Lisa said, uh, the, her, have we got the uh, last question about cars wrong? So uh, she's quite pleased about that, actually. <laughs> so we're not, we've got fortune here in the chat, perhaps. Well, they've got the box set, even if they've not bothered to read the book. <laughs> we had any zoology questions yet, Dave? No, because it's always landed on blue. <laughs> OK. Here's a zoology question. Fingers on buzzers. Holly blue, red admiral, purple hair streak and meadow brown are all types of what? Is it A, moth? Is it B, butterfly? B, butterfly. Correct. That was, yeah, that was a gift. Well, <laughs> did they have time to even answer that at home, HJ? On the widget, it seems that they're straight in there, but uh, I'm not sure about in the chat box. We'll see how many answers. OK. That was two points, by the way. Did I you did, give I two? did that. Yeah. OK. <laughs> OK. I'm on it. Sit for one. Ten seconds. <laughs> so for another two points, what have we got coming up now? Uh, agnetology. Agnetology. Oh, have we had agnetology yet? I don't think we have. No, we haven't. OK. Agnetology, the study of culturally induced ignorance or doubt particularly the publication of inaccurate or misleading data. It could never and happen here. Our, our <laughs> fake news discussion with the library this morning, you can watch that on the catch-up. Hmm. OK, fingers on buzzers. What is the only Olympic event in which a mother and daughter have competed together? Is it A, gymnastics? Is it B, long jump? Is it C, golf? 
or is it D archery? Complete guess. D archery. Completely incorrect guess. <laughs> Is it sea golf? It is indeed sea golf. Ooh. It was at a golf tournament of 1900. Um, it was won by US golfer Margaret Abbott and her mother Mary, a novelist, also competed in the event, finishing joint seventh. So that was two points there. For one bonus point, what's the only country to win a gold, to have won a gold medal at every Summer Games? USA. Nope. Do you want to have a go? France. No, it's us. <laughs> Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at home, did they know about mothers and daughters playing golf together in the Olympics? I think uh, John's with me and just not sure. I had no idea about that. I'm not very sporty myself. But um, uh, Jane and uh, Fran, they guess golf as well so that's kind of good but overall in the chat I don't think we would get uh, a point for that one but uh, Fran guessed China for the most go gold models perhaps we it's could find out the most medals it's on the only country to win a gold at every game at every games but uh, maybe we'll find out what the second one was. Oh, okay and, and what's uh, team home score is anyone keeping score have you not organized that um, Mm. Now, as far as we're concerned in the chat, uh, the score is the most. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, I'm sure that's going to go well down with the scientists. <laughs> OK. Well, the uh, answers are now worth three points each. So... That's a pantology question. Fingers on buzzers. Which, three quarters of the way through. Yeah, which English football team has a seahorse as its mascot. Is it A, Northampton Town, that well-known seaside resort just up the road? <laughs> Is it B, MK Dons? Is it C, Whitley Bay? Or is it D, York City? C, Whitley Bay. Makes sense, doesn't it? That is correct. <laughs> um, I wish it was a trick question. Clarence the Dragon is a mascot of Northampton Town and Yorkie the Lion is a mascot for York City. What's Sam K. Don's his mascot? It's a cow. A, ca oh, a concrete <laughs> cow. <laughs> Are you making this up? <laughs> <laughs> a cow. Louis. Louis the cow. Louis. I think it is, Louis yeah. the cow. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> OK. Uh, so that was three points, and as a for, for two bonus points, two bonus points, footballer Clarence Seedorf is the only footballer to have won the UEFA Champions League with three different teams. Can you name those teams? AC Milan, Real Madrid, Ajax of Amsterdam. Well done, very good. That was. <laughs> That, that was definitely worth two bonus points. Has that really widened the margin? Oh, good massively Lord. has. Come on, Team Iron. We need to inject some steam into this. You're ten points behind. Well, lucky for Team Iron, the answers are now worth five points each. <laughs> uh, did, but did they get the seahorse with Whitley Bay? It seems obvious. It's we only did overall, team. but uh, I think in the chat we've just had people posting no. <laughs> so when it comes to sports or football, I'm, we need to get some sports and fitness students in here to help balance. <laughs> Balance this out, I think. Okay. But we have been able to verify that the uh, mascot for MK Dons is, is the cow. Millie the cow, is it? Mm. Millie, Millie the cow, sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. Very cuddly cow. <laughs> right, right, spin the wheel. And it stops on <laughs> pantology, as if by chance. Okay, your pantological question. Fingers on buzzers. Discovered in 1846 by English astronomer William Lassell. Triton is the largest moon of which planet? Is it A, Saturn? Is it B, Jupiter? Is it C, Neptune? Yeah, I think I'll go with A, Saturn. No, or D, Mars? Is it C, Neptune? It's C, Neptune. That's five points. Yeah. Five. Dave, I always get Titan and Triton mixed up. How do I remember? Yeah, I I, we've well, all away. the moons of Saturn are named after Titans. The biggest one is called Titan, and the others, like Enceladus and Mimas and Dione, are individual 
titans. So if you know your classical mythology, you can do it that way. No, I'm not going to forget. Oh, I'm <laughs> but Neptune is the god of the sea. And what did he have in his hand? Oh, yeah. A triton. A triton. Yeah. A three prong forky thing. Okay. So. Next time that comes up in conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, uh, so uh, a bonus point, a three yeah. point, a three bonus points. Earth is the only planet in our solar system to have only one moon, the moon, spelt with a capital M. Mm. How many people have walked on our moon? Fourteen. No. Three. No. Why did you think fourteen? I just thought it was in the right ballpark. Okay. Uh, it would have been 14 if Apollo 13 had made it down to a lunar landing, but Apollo 13 um, had the malfunction, had to go around the moon and straight back. So there were six Apollo missions that landed on the moon, so two people in each that got down to the surface. So a total is 12 people who walked on the moon. There's another moon, though, Dave, like with a crazy orbit. Not really there are asteroids which are in orbital resonance with the earth and they will orbit the sun in one year and come close to the earth now and then but they're going around the sun not around the earth so they're not true moons of the earth okay. we've only Small got M. one moon mm. the moon <laughs> uh, sign up and do the moon's mook or do the open learn version um it's it's great fun three hours a week all right, so we're on 17.12. We're on 17.12. Well, five points five still. Points. Mm -hmm. We've got to let him win. We've got to see. Zoology, is it? Mm hmm OK, a zoological question. Ursus maritimus is the scientific name for what species? Is it A, killer whale? Is it B, emperor penguin? Is it D, reindeer? C, reindeer? Or is it D, polar bear? <laughs> Ursus Maritimus. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it D? It's polar bear. That's five yeah. points. Wow. Right, this <laughs> takes us up to even scores. Seven okay. All. And for two bonus points, what's the name of the multi award winning documentary series co created by the BBC and the Open Universe? I'm going to guess you're talking about Frozen Planet. I am indeed, <laughs> Frozen Planet. <laughs> One point, is it, Dave? A two, two, two points. Right. So that focused on life in the Arctic and, and, and Antarctic. So did they know that Ursus Maritimus was the polar bear? Uh, Juliana got straight in there, which is really good. And we're liking all these little facts we're picking up. And one thing I heard the other day, that a killer whale isn't actually a whale, it's a, a type of dolphin, isn't it? And it was a mistranslation because it was originally in French and it was supposed to be whale killer. That's what I heard. Maybe you can correct me in the chat. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, they're all citations, aren't they? But Ursus is Latin for bear, as in Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, the constellation. So Ursus Maritimus means marine bear. OK, so five right. points in it. Spin yeah. the wheel. Now we've got two points in the lead. Team Iron's still behind. Actually, let's not do that. Let's do that one. We've got etymology. <laughs> OK. An etymological question coming up. I like those <laughs> Words are cheap. The biggest thing you can say is elephant. Are words of wisdom from which public figure? Is it A, Charlie Chaplin, B, Charles Dickens, C, Ray Charles, or D, Charles Darwin? <laughs> C, Ray Charles? No. Is it A, Charlie Chaplin? Yes. It says here it was the silent movie star, Charlie Chaplin, so he wasn't always silent, was he? Said it in French. That was five points. And for two bonus points, what was Charlie Chaplin's full name? Yeah. Going to have to hurry you. Charles Chaplin. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try, but no. It was Charles Spencer Chaplin. Um, did they know that Charlie Chaplin said, words are cheap, the biggest thing you can say is elephant? I know uh, Fran and Libby did, so well done. Yes, but uh, we need someone to keep track of these points in the chat. I think we've got too many to count, though. 
So two so. people at home knew the answer. <laughs> How many people at home did not know the answer? <laughs> I think we're not counting that one. That, no, that's, well, no we're not doing that. <laughs> What's the score? Right, Ooh. the score is 22-19, Dave. We have ten minutes left. OK, well, five points riding on this one. Agnotology. <laughs> In 2002, Nestle, or Nestle, set a Guinness World Record for creating the largest chocolate what? I'll give you a moment to think about that. The largest chocolate what? Was it A, bar, B, teapot, C, cake, or D, firework? A. You think it was the largest bar. chocolate bar? No, it wasn't a chocolate bar. So. What are the options again, Professor Rotherham? The options are oh. A, B, <laughs> C, or D. I think well done. Teapot or firework? It's, it's bar, know. teapot, cake, or firework. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got B. You think that chocolate teapot would yeah. have been of any particular <laughs> use? <laughs> As opposed to a very large chocolate bar. <laughs> no, it was a chocolate firework. It was, it was created in Switzerland and contained 60 kilograms of Swiss chocolate. When it was lit, it exploded and the chocolates were released. <laughs> That well, was better. Jane, that was no. better. Why can't our chemists do that? Yes. I, they probably would as well, and I think Jane got that as well, didn't she, H yeah. show? Yes, but uh, I think me and Emma both thought it was bar that you know to us that would have made sense. But uh, Lisa's become our official. Um, we we need a name. Who's our point counter? Score counter. Score counter. Yeah. That'll be it. There should be a hat and everything. But uh, she says we're only two points down overall in the chat from with all the questions. So yeah, I'd say we're ahead, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, that round didn't actually trouble the scorer, did it? So let's see if we can move things along. Well, the chocolate firework contained like um, it was about three meters high and contained all the chocolate we could possibly eat. Sixty kilos. Of chocolate, can you imagine? There's only enough for one study session, though, right? <laughs> I, I think I'm going to write that in my notebook <laughs> when I'm finished. Right, let's not do that. Not do that. There we are. Etymology. etymology. So we haven't done okay. much epistemology, have we? We should do a bit. We have, we've had five etymology questions already. We're running out. Lilliput, Brobdingnag, Glubdubrib, and Balney Barbie are the brainchild of which author? Is it A, Jonathan Swift? <laughs> A Jonathan Swift. It is yes. <laughs> um, Combo Jonathan Swift featuring Gulliver's Travels. Um, okay. And well, did they knowing where he's buried? Um, <laughs> Not that we need it. No, because I wouldn't know whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> they tell us where it is Jonathan home. Swift buried. Isn't, isn't he buried in a cathedral in Dublin? Where he was that the dean. Be Dublin Cathedral then. Du uh, yes, <laughs> du that's the one. I think he was the dean, wasn't he, of Dublin Cathedral? Okay. Somebody might know at home, so we can <laughs> find <laughs> out. <laughs> Did they have time to answer Jonathan Swift? I mean, Lilliput gives it away. Uh, and Dre got uh, Jonathan Swift, and uh, Gislaine's uh, just recovering from the fact that there's such a thing as a chocolate firework. We're quite <laughs> amazed by that. So okay. Jonathan Swift is buried in St Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin. Oh, okay. So let's spin the wheel. Yeah, so, epistemology. We haven't. This is our first epistemological question. Yeah, it's such an important concept, the isn't nature, it, Dave? The nature, sources, and limits of knowledge. How more important could it be? <laughs> oh God! That's a bloody sports question. Michael Phelps, <laughs> the most decorated Olympian of all time, is known for which sport? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we're so nervous. Basic, basic, moment, basic isn't it? <laughs> rookie error. Swimming. Yeah, was it A, B, C, or D? <laughs> Close your eyes and pray. Manzerville has bailed out. <laughs> C, swimming. Correct! <laughs> <laughs> what a fluke! <laughs> By the time he retired at age 31, Phelps had a total of 28 medals. We can just do that every time now. Did they do 
Did they get the right answer by a more sensible method at home? <laughs> uh, yes, Shirley said swimming. Emma says definitely swimming. I remember um, watching in the last Olympics and it was just amazing, wasn't it? He, yeah, mm. really was. OK. Well, we've 29, 22 and only a few minutes left to, uh, to play. OK. So, uh, we'll keep them at five for now. Yeah. What well, have we got? Well, let's do that one again. Etymology. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job, actually, of, of the random allocation of the wheel, I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, OK. Etymology. What is the name of the newspaper read by Harry Potter and his friends in the Wizarding World? Harry Potter and his friends. Is it A? No, you can't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> HJ knows the answer. He's getting very excited here. So... The newspaper read at Hogwarts. Is it A, the Daily Prophet? B, A, the Daily Prophet. It is indeed, yes. HJ, <laughs> <laughs> did you know that as well? Yes, you I did, did know that. I may be a fan, but uh, yes, uh, Libby seems to be a fan as well, so <laughs> yes, I'm very pleased about that question. OK, <laughs> for two bonus points, what position does Harry Potter play in the Gryffindor <laughs> Quidditch? <laughs> I think he's a seeker. And the Quidditch team, he is the seeker. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. Is that two, two points. Oh. Wow. And the seeker has to do what? It's something to do with a quaffle. <laughs> no, it's for Put it between the, the, the big sticks at the end. Catch the golden yeah. snitch. Oh, the snitch. The oh, snitch, right. not the quaffle. Oh, right. I'm Apologies. minded to take points off. So oh, no. careful. I think, so. I think draw, it's a draw at the moment. My children will be mortified. Five, <laughs> five points for. Right, well, it's neck and neck with five minutes to go. Have a decent a random allocation this time. Epistemology again. Okay. What academic discipline might you be studying if you came across the terms morphology, phonology, semantics, and syntax? Is it A, linguistic? A, linguistics. Yeah, it is. Which is the scientific study of language and its structure. Five points opens up a five point lead for you. Did they know linguistics at home? Was it time even? Anastasia was uh, straight in there, given the quick answer on uh, linguistics. And uh, Jane thinks Libby should be in the, uh, join the university challenge team. But uh, she's done very well in the chat. I think we all have collectively. Well, okay. well done at home. <laughs> Spin the wheel. Oh. That's pantology. <laughs> That's defined as pantology. Okay. Which Hitchcock film starred James Stewart as a photographer confined to his apartment with a broken leg who passes time by spying on his neighbours? Was it A, Psycho? Was it B, Rear Window? B, Rear Window. Rear Window, yes. Um, for two bonus points, what's the name of the character that Jimmy Stewart played in the Feel Good Christmas film It's a Wonderful Life? We've all seen It's a Wonderful mm. Life. Is it We're going to have to hurry. The moon? What? Is it true he lassoed the moon? <laughs> Is it true James Stewart lassoed the moon? Mm. In the what? film, Wonderful Life. It's a film. You know it's all a about moons. It's a Dave. Hollywood movie. It's not true at all. It was made up. <laughs> you ruined it now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a scene. No, I've never noticed. No, nobody knows. It was it was George Bailey. Okay. How many how many questions have we got left before the clock runs out? Right, we're Ooh. on 39.29. Well, questions, answers are now worth ten points. <laughs> and it's an agnotology question. Is it? Yes. If you want, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is. In September 2009, magician David Blaine created a short film that saw him spend several days swimming with roughly two dozen great white sharks. What did he wear for this activity? Was it A, a tuxedo? Was it B, a wetsuit? C, a shark costume? Or D, a superhero outfit? Oh, the shark repellent would have been in there. What are we thinking? 
Yeah. C. Do you think he wore a shark costume to swim with <laughs> sharks? Yeah. No, he didn't. <laughs> um, Shall we go for that one? Yeah. We're going to guess that it was D, a superhero costume. No. He just wore he, a he, No, he wore a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> um, the film was called Dressing for Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> So that didn't trouble the score. Did they know the answer at home? Well, Emma, and I agree, says the answer should be D, a superhero outfit. But uh, we, we also reckon that uh, the teams in the studio are putting you through a lot and we talked about having power naps to recover ourselves later. So you <laughs> might need I think we'll all need a power nap after this. <laughs> OK, is this the last question coming up? Still well, worth ten points? We, yes, we've got... Uh, this is our last question. Okay. I'll do a good spin. So there'd better be for a lot of points, Dave. Oh, it's a gamble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a gamble. Should we play our joker now? <laughs> 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 Zoology, is it? Zoology? Yes. OK, Zoology. Zoology question. What species were the first animals in space? A, monkey. B, cat. C, fruit flies. D, D dog. D rat. Oh. <laughs> uh, the answer wasn't D. C fruit flies. Yes. <laughs> um, fruit flies were first launched into space aboard a US V2 rocket in 1947. This wasn't into orbit, it was just up and back again, so it depends how you define space. It reached 109 kilometres, which technically makes the flies the first animals in space. They were all recovered alive. <laughs> what did that 10 points do? Did it double the gap or draw a level? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Do we have time for one more question? Yes, the next Go question's on, worth yeah. 15 <laughs> points. Oh, What's it landed on? More. OK, hang on, I'll, I'll do, a, do a... No pressure, Team uh, Iron. Ninjology. Yeah, ninjology. OK, final question, then. <laughs> In the popular TV show Game of Thrones... Oh. Oh. Who plays Mother of Dragons Daenerys Stormborn? Is it A. Amelia Clark, B. Rooney Mara, C. Cressida Cowell, or D. Lena Heidi? I think it's Cressida Cowell. No. It is not Cressida Cowell. Can you give the names again? A. Amelia Clark, B. Rooney Mara, C. Cressida Cowell, D. Lena Heady. Is it Amelia? I don't know. I think it's A or D. I don't, I don't watch it. D. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're going to say D. Lena Heady. And you could have said A, which was would have been the correct answer. Oh. So nobody's earned any points there. For a bonus for <laughs> for <laughs> for <laughs> 16, <laughs> 16 <laughs> bonus points, can you name any one of Daenerys's dragons? Oh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> See, you might think studying is a better use of your time than watching Game of Thrones, but if you'd watched Game of Thrones, you would have known the answer. Nobody knows any of Daenerys' dragons? Flamey, Flappy. Puff. Puff. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. You don't know. I guess. Well, you either know it or you don't. They're called Drogon, Viserion and Rhaegal. Does that draw this to a natural close? <laughs> <laughs> who's won? Well, Team Rave have won in the lead with 44 points and Team I'm 29. Congratulations, well, Team Rave. Congratulations, you might be back as the highest scoring losers. Uh, we'll just have to wait and find out. Do you want to award the winners their trophy, Dave? Winners? <laughs> Here is your trophy, <laughs> team captain. Very well played, sir. <laughs> and because nobody loses here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and thanks for playing along at home. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, coming along. And thank you, Dave. A suspicious number of um, opportunities to talk about space in those questions, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> but you've made the most of them. So thank you for, uh, for coming along and filling us in. I hope you've had a fab time at home playing along with us. Um, thank you very much for participating. HJ, any final thoughts? Uh, just surprisingly, a lot of people know about these dragons, so uh, maybe we need to take heed of our own words and uh, not procrastinate by watching Game of Thrones so much. But it's been great fun with everyone in the chat. Of course, we've uh, better than everyone in the studio, but we won't tell them that. But uh, 
Yeah, well done. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, HJ, for representing Team Home. Uh, and I'm just very impressed you haven't yet started organising another Comic-Con uh, convention uh, trip that you were sorting yes, out last time. Yes, that hasn't happened yet. No. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> plenty more time. Um, well, thank you very much for watching at home. We've now got a break in the live studio, but the chat's going to continue. So please keep talking to each other. We're going to show you some of the replays from our boot camps. These are all about skilling you up for study. So lots of essential information and also some really, really, good interviews. We'll be back a little bit later tonight at six o'clock um, where we're going to be talking uh, with the disabled students group and then we've got a really exciting program as well of activities right up through till half past eight tonight. Don't forget to eat, don't forget to power nap, don't forget to use your highlighters appropriately. We'll see you back at six o'clock. Bye for now.